Oh my goodness. I still feel like I'm Halloween hungover. Like, is that yes. a legit thing? I ate a lot of candy for my kids' bags last night. I oh. lost it. And <laughs> Dusty has it on in her computer. <laughs> and there's a delay. And it was like, hi, Brandon. I just heard that. <laughs> That's awesome. Hi, guys. Um, Welcome. I am here with Courtney Whitmore, my good friend, also known as Pizzazzery. Can we call like you? I know your blog and everything, your book is Pizzazzery, but can we just call you like Pizzazzery herself? You all, you may. I, I do get called that, so go for it. <laughs> That's so awesome. Well, hi, friends. So Courtney and I have been friends for a long time, since basically since we both got started, which was ten, almost 10 years ago for me. How yeah, many? yeah, about seven and a half, eight for me. Oh my gosh, that's insane. Um, and we both had full-time jobs when we met via the interwebs. And um, we were both blogging and like doing things that were new in the universe mm -hmm. and really hit it off. Um, and we both worked at universities back then. So I worked in university advancement and fundraising and Courtney worked in, what did you do at the Vanderbilt? Center in the Vanderbilt Career Center. That's awesome. So Courtney's in Nashville and I'm in Tampa and um, our software is working today, which is wonderful. Yes. <laughs> um, but we are going to talk about simplifying the holidays. So I'm one of those people that's like, okay, guys, Halloween is over. Let's put up the Christmas tree. Yeah. Um, and admittedly, and I know people are like, that you're super annoying, Emily, because there is Thanksgiving. But I'm like, what is Thanksgiving? Let's just move on straight to Christmas. Yeah. But for the purposes of this Facebook Live, we'll talk about Thanksgiving and Christmas and talk about um, how to simplify one of the most chaotic stressful, overwhelming, and also amazing and special times of the year. So it's like, you know, it's it's one of the most special times of the year with lots of memories and lots of family and lots of get togethers. But with all those things comes so much complication and so much stress. So we're going to dive in. But first, Courtney, I'll let you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your family and your blog and your books. Hey, um, hey, y'all. I'm Courtney. I um like we talked about, I started a blog called Pizzazzery about seven and a half, eight years ago. And it truly was just a place to share entertaining ideas. I did not think it would become a full-time job, but alas, thankfully it did. Um, <laughs> so I share like party recipes, party tips, tablescapes. So holidays are kind of my thing. Like I'm into them. Mm -hmm. um, I do, I kind of jump in early on them. I get excited about it. So I'm definitely on the Christmas train. <laughs> it's fun, but it's like, a, it's like a preview to Christmas. So I totally agree. Um, and then a couple years into blogging, I wrote my first book called Push Up Pops. And then I did one called Candy Making for Kids and Frosting. So I did a bunch of like sweet treat books. And then I just finished last year a book called Pizzazzery Entertain and Style. So it's kind of my. I have it right here. I should have gotten it out. Sure. Um, yeah. So I just finished that and I'm kind of wrapping up book tour stuff right now. I have two more places to go sign and then all done with that. So. I work full time from home. Um, I have one three year old little girl, Blakely. She's feisty and sassy and kind of a mini me. We are our best friends. They just don't know it yet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, um, I have a dog named George. He's up um, or else he'd be barking in the background. But um, and I think that's it. Essentially, I blog full time and share content for brands and create entertaining ideas and books on the side and um, all wrapped up into one. So, yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, my mom, I have to tell you, I told Courtney this earlier when we were chatting about this, but my mom is a big fan. If I think she's watching. Hi, mom. Um, my mom is a big fan of Courtney's. And this morning she was texting me and saying, I have questions and I'm going to need you to include here. And then we had a phone call about these questions. And so I have lots of questions asked Courtney, but um, I have to also say when we, so we don't entertain at our house a ton just because of hashtag twin toddlers. But when we do, like, we love having a Kentucky Derby party. It's kind of our, like, thing that we do. Um, and then, obviously, like, with the holidays with the kids and stuff like that, the first place I go to look for ideas is always to Courtney's blog because she has ideas that are not only, like, super cute and fun and always kid-friendly, I feel like, they're simple enough to not be completely overwhelming and over the top. Yeah. Um, and that's what I love about your new book, too. It's, like, everything in there was totally doable and not, like, like, I am not going to be the one to do, like, something huge and massive and, and crazy awesome unless somebody's getting married. But everything you do is so, like, it looks beautiful and elaborate, but it's totally, like, a tape. Yeah. Yeah. Or you won't do it. I mean, if you see something. I mean, I appreciate 
coffee table books or magazines where it's a full on spread, but I want to kind of tailor that down to how do you, how can you entertain and actually do it with right. children or like pick a few favorite ideas. A lot of times people will write and say, I love your blog, but even I get overwhelmed by seeing all those ideas. And I'm thinking I'm maximizing the amount of space to share tips. Like y'all don't need to do all these things. Like, pick right. <laughs> these are like lots of ideas. Do a personalized place card for Thanksgiving this year. Like that may be upping the ante for you. Like yep. easy to do it. So um, yeah, it's uh, pizzazzery.com. Someone mentioned sharing the link. It's kind of hard to spell. Uh, I didn't really think about that one eight years ago. Okay. <laughs> right so she got it. She's going to write people. She'll write okay. people and okay. tell them how to get to um, it. But yeah, it's just, I like sharing easy ideas that people actually do because if yeah. you won't do it, I mean, if it's too elaborate, you're not going to do it. And so yeah. that's so fun. So easy ideas. That's awesome. So Courtney, when do you start getting ready for the holidays? Like we, we were having, my mom and I were having this conversation this morning. Like when is it appropriate or in my world, socially acceptable to put the Christmas tree up because I'm ready to do it today. I've been known to put the Christmas tree up on November 1st. Yes, um, I also am on that camp, but that's because, A, I like it all, but that's because I'm trying to diffuse a lot of the stress that can happen. So, yeah. yes, you may want to be the kind that does it the day after Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving, I think, is a little earlier this year, so you can get away with yeah. it. But you're then telling yourself that essentially that week is now going to be full of a lot of stuff that I would rather divide out over the month of November. Yes, that but is so good. That's one thing about a party, like prep in advance, because same with same with the Christmas decorations, like you want to enjoy it. And sometimes putting them up can be fun. But if you have to leave, you're like, I will not do it till December 1st. Right. Then your first week of December is going to be wild. And like, what if right. you have other stuff to do? And stuff pops up and like right. Target has a good sale on cute stuff. Like, you got to go. Okay. So they're putting it out, by the way. The Halloween stuff came down a few days ago. I was there and I was like, these shelves are all there. And I know what's about to go here. Yes. Also, the the Chip and Joanna Gaines stuff launches attention, everyone. It launches them fifth. So, like, you gotta you got to have time for stuff like that, which means you yeah. start early. But if you're, like, overwhelmed and your husband's like, do not put the tree up or I will be <laughs> I get it. So here are some things you can do behind the scenes. So yeah. go to Costco and stock up on, like, tissue paper. Um, go and, like, get a Costco lot of Costco sell gift wrap? Of course they do. I'm new to Costco. We just got one down the street. It's the Costco tissue paper. It's, I mean, it's just simple white, but like I, literally if you try to buy it from anywhere, you're going to get like four sheets and then you're yeah, out. And there's, it's expensive too. So like get the big one. Um, but basically you can do behind the scenes of like secret prepping. If you're like families, like do not put that tree up. <laughs> so get gifts, wrap them. Like if you see cute gift tags, get those, get the tissue, like prep. Because yeah. sometimes it's the running around of 400 stores that'll yeah. take you down. Um, because when the holiday traffic picks up. So if you don't want to put the tree up, like fine, no problem, but like at least do some prepping behind the scenes, like like your gift closet or like your attic, like start to organize it by kid. Like these gifts are for grandma or this yeah, child. That's this what child. we do. Yeah. So I, st I actually start shopping in the summertime. And for me, I start like around those 4th of July Labor Day sales is when I start really thinking about it. And then I always, it's always, the, it's always the Lily Pulitzer after party sale. And I'm like, oh, Christmas presents. Like yes. we need to start thinking about that. And it, when is that? It's always in September, I think. So yeah. I do for the girls and the ladies in my family, I always try to like catch that sale and then catch some of the other sales. And obviously like... Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and all of that. Um, I don't go anywhere, but I do shop online yeah. uh, for those kinds of things. And then I actually have in my closet, I have like a little corner where I start putting like, yeah. and I, I take post-it notes and I put them on the floor and say like, this is for Caroline, this is for Tyler, this is for Brady. And my family knows like the closet is off limits. Don't Get go out there. Brian's have to hide because we share a closet. But like all of those go right there. And then we just, you know start tough. and if you're worried about your kids going in it like i we have a little room off our master that's like a like an enclosed attic and that's where i put things yeah but we have a lock on the outside at the top just like one of those hook locks and so we just have it up high so the three-year-old can't get to it because then literally can go in there and be like uncle aunt because if you don't here's what's going to happen you're going to get down to like december 24th and grandma only has socks and you're like what do i do now and like you can't right. That's that's what you're trying to avoid. And so just yeah. like make piles, um, figure it out early, like who has too many, like too many gifts, who needs more gifts. And that way you, right. know, you can enjoy the holidays. Like that's key. Like you should not be running around like a crazy person. Try to like do a yeah. little bit at a time, you know? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit at a time is totally it. And then I keep um, on my phone in the notes app. I've started using the notes app on my phone a lot. 
Um, I keep a little running list of what I've bought, especially for the kids, but also for like family members and things like that. Um, for my kids, I'll keep a list just so I know, like, you know, I don't get to December 24th and one child is, you know, without or whatever. But that brings us to a good point because we were talking the other day about organizing and simplifying your home. And we've talked about my book, A Simplified Life, a lot. But basically in the book, there's there's 10 chapters on 10 different things that can be really overwhelming. And we do not cover the holidays, but we do cover your home. So when you're thinking about the holidays and shopping, especially for kids, how how do you guys do it with Blakely? Like, how do you not just like completely fill your stuff with more junk you don't need? Just like, just to get the smile out of her. Do you know what I mean? Like we buy the big giant something to give to the child to get the big giant Christmas smile. And then the next day they figure out they have it and it's, you're already. Right. You know? Well, um, this is another way that I try to like kind of declutter the house. Like, obviously, I want a few of my favorite Christmas decorations and I want the tree, but I don't want 17 inflatables in my front yard and all over the house. <laughs> so here's what I do. And uh, my mom did this for me and my brother growing up. And so this is what I do with Blakely. We have a little I think it came from Hobby Lobby, like three foot tree. And a lot of people will do trees in the kids rooms. But that's I want to buy all this pink stuff. Um, I remember when I when I had found out I was having Blakely up for sure. I thought it was a boy. So when I found out it was a girl, I literally went crazy. So now I still have that tub. Like if I see a pink nutcracker, like I cannot walk away. Mm -hmm. And so what I do though is you don't want that stuff in your living room and your dining room, and you just look like something went wrong, you know. Right. So I buy all that stuff and it goes in her room. Like I set up the tree. I put all the little nutcrackers around. I, all the stuff that I like can't walk away from because it's so yeah. Cute. Mm -hmm. like put it in the kids room like all the kids right. stuff can go in the kids room and so yeah. then you kind of feel like you have like a house to sit down with with your husband at night that doesn't look like toys r us you know right. and obviously we make a big deal about like what things she does have and I, this is crazy but i don't take likely a lot of time shopping with me because i don't want i want that i want that she you yeah. know what she needs to know the things that she, she gets or like that's what she gets and so yeah. Um, and it's kind of nice Like growing up, we had commercials and it's kind of nice that like now if I put her on an app like Disney Junior, she's yeah. not seeing too many. They don't they don't have that many. So Disney she Junior's not so about that. I feel like it's not like toy after toy. After right. toy. So she really doesn't know what she's not missing. Um, yeah. But I think put the kids stuff in the kids rooms or in like a playroom. Don't feel like it yeah. has to be in your living room. And if they're like, I want my like tree in the living room, like go to your room and hang out with it. Yeah. There. Do you keep all of her toys like all of her toys in her room? Um, we have a playroom that has a lot, but she doesn't tend to want to go there and play by herself because she's like yeah. an only child. So she's like, I want to be in the living room. So we had we added doors to our built ins in the living room on the bottom, kind of like you have in the background. So yeah. if you open one of those stuff is just going to fall out. And so right. but we just like shove it back in and close the doors. Yeah. So she has some there and then she has some in the playroom. Her bedroom actually only has books, but um she'll probably start to like rearrange like where she rearrange. My but, yeah, we try to make it if you walked in. You might you might know we have a child from the living room, but that's only when she decides to open those cabinets because yeah. I kind of want to feel like I don't literally and it's hard like all those like contraptions and when they're younger. Good luck yeah. because the spaceship baby swing like has got to be where you need it to be where like, you need it to go. But after right. that age, it gets a little easier. I'm a big fan of like things that have doors. Closet. Yes. <laughs> yes. So you don't really have to worry about what it looks like behind the door. <laughs> yeah, like we moved in and added those doors. Like it was like, all right, because it's just try not to. Like at the end of the day, when you, I'm one of those people. Like when I was growing up, I couldn't do my homework until my bed was made upstairs. Like I That's have me. to, like, yeah, like you work up in the same closet. It's true. You can't, like chill out with a glass of wine and watch a movie when you look yeah. around and it's just like stuff. You stuff. know, so like put it up or mm -hmm. put it all in the attic. And as they outgrow it, I think some people leave the stuff out. Like put it up, like they can, you can go in the attic. Like they don't need the toys yeah. from age one when they're age four, you know? Right, totally. You know, my mom and I were talking about this when she was here that decorating for Christmas for me, and maybe this is like me in my OCD nature, but like decorating for Christmas to me sometimes is a little chaotic where I'm like, I really want to bring out all of the decorations. And I, you know, obviously we put the tree up and we, you know, put all the decorations everywhere, but it makes my house feel cluttered and not yeah. decorated sometimes. And she, my mom was like, right. And that's because you have to swap. And this is something that I've started doing the last few years. You have to undecorate before you decorate. So you have to put away your everyday decorations in some areas so you can bring out the Christmas decorations so that they have like room to breathe and not just be like, Yes. More stuff. Yes. Like you take know? a pile of picture frames, like off like a side console where you might put Christmas stuff. Like yes. just wipe it all. Like candlesticks and picture frames, like it can all come down and go away because yeah. then there is room. Because it's true. Like if you just like keep piling, you're going to look, it's, 
Then you can feel better. Relax because there's just stuff everywhere. And you don't even have a place to put your keys down when you walk in the house. And that's exactly it. Like I always say physical clutter is mental clutter. And it, for the holidays, I don't want to feel like, oh, all the Christmas stuff came out and now my house is super cluttered, whereas usually it's not. And it, and it doesn't even matter like how big your house is, your storage space is or whatever. Like we have, a, we don't have an attic. We have a, a room kind of like you said. Um, it's off. Of, it's actually off of Brady's room. It's really weird. It's <laughs> tiny. It's where our um, air conditioner is. Yeah. So when we moved into this house. We had to get rid of a ton of stuff that we would usually store. But I have, um, I wish I could take this camera and show you. I have hooks on the walls for all my wreaths and they all go up there. Yeah. And then we have, um, and I have like a Halloween wreath set. I have a Thanksgiving one and a Christmas one and then an everyday one. And so they're all hanging up there nicely. And then um, if you catch Target or Walmart at the right time, you can get those big um, plastic bins that are colors, like holiday colors. So there's red and green for Christmas and there's orange and black for Halloween. Anything. That's what we have. And then yeah, they're clear. you could just yeah. write like Halloween on a piece of paper and stick it on that. But we have those, t those big tubs too. And those suckers stack. Like we, I think we're like eight high. Like, yeah. yeah. That's how we store kids clothes that we're going to pass down. Yeah. Or at this point, we're going to don't like give to my brother. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, no, so yeah we, they all no, stack we have up. the same thing. My, um, that walk-in attic is all those tubs and they're just like yeah. up against the wall. And then we have like a shelving unit from Home Depot. That's just like metal and it has the, four hooks at the top and we didn't put a shelf on the top so that no. we can have wreaths on like the, the four corners. Um, yeah, that's smart. Use those can, hand hooks, like pop them up. Yeah. There. Just like, mm -hmm. and then if you need to put like a, like Blakely's Christmas tree. Oh, Blakely's Christmas tree. I literally, and I, we will lose a few ornaments that I have to like pick back up. Yeah. But we take a like clear trash bag and we put it over top of the, and then we like slide it into that room. And so I don't have to take those. And they're over. still hung up. And most of them are still oh, hung up and you might need to like, fix a few, but then you just like, like drag it back in. And it's just that way that that thing is done in like 10 minutes. Like pick up the ones that dropped and like your kids. Are I love that. I was telling Brian last night, the thing I hate most about decorating for Christmas, I love decorating for Christmas, but the thing I hate most is fluffing the Christmas tree leaves because we get a fake tree because I do not like spiders. And I, we had a real tree as a kid or something. Maybe I saw this on a movie, but there was a spider in the tree. I don't do spiders. Yeah. Not at all. So we have a fake tree and uh, like fluffing the Christmas tree leaves. Anything you can do to make putting up that tree, that tree easier. That's awesome. Exactly. Okay. Now I have, I, I feel like we could talk about this stuff forever. I'm like, I want to see all your Christmas decorations. And how <laughs> I, I'm <laughs> awesome. this afternoon. That's so great. Well, and you know, on that note about Christmas decorating to me, and maybe this is the way I grew up in my family, but Thanksgiving was like Thanksgiving, but there was always Christmas decor around like the Christmas tree. Yeah, went up before. Okay. Like yeah. you can still eat your Turkey with like the tree being put up. In fact, it gives yeah. a lot of people something to do after you finish eating is to like go work on that. If you still have yeah. a little left uh -huh. um, or else you're doing what I told you a minute ago, you're leaving it all till the end out of like, I will not do it. And then, okay, fine. But that first week of D December, like there's so many things going on that week too. And you're I mean, not going to be able to do it um, because you refuse to put it up or like leave the dining room bare in it so you can have Thanksgiving without it if you want. And like right. bring those decorations out later, but like do the kids' rooms or do, yeah. like I said, do the gift buying. Um, yeah. do, the, do something in advance because otherwise you're just not going to enjoy it. And like you should enjoy it. Like that's key. So. I totally agree. Okay, big, most important question of the day. How do you keep Blakely and George off of the Christmas tree? Yes, and so my mom always told me this, and this may be common knowledge, but um, we have a lot of ornaments, and a lot of them are not are the non-breakable, like, you know, like Hobby Lobby will be like non-breakable, and that's yeah. amazing, it looks like glass. And then we have a lot, though, that were like gifted to us or whatever that are glass or are, are breakable. Right. It's probably obvious, but like those go at the top of the tree. Yep. So like the non-breakable ones go at the bottom of the tree. And this is something we're doing this year. My mom's always done it, but she's going to give me hers this year. So we had, she had made, but I guess you could literally buy this somewhere, but um, like a riser. So we're going to put the tree stand on a riser that's just like plywood. She, she went and bought like a round plywood circle at like Home Depot that's like 20 something inches wide or 30 inches wide. Wow. And then, and then like 
screwed or something like wooden legs into it the legs are maybe like a foot tall yeah and the tree goes on that and so then the tree looks even more grand than the size that it is and then the presence that way you're not like and it, especially if it's a real tree because you had a real tree growing up and yeah. if you need to water it otherwise you have to take all the presents out to like get to the tree to water it now it's easier because it's up about a foot another reason we don't have a real tree <laughs> oh yeah um and so but then it kind of it sits up higher and fancier but but also it's that extra little bit that the child can't I mean, if they're in the child's eye view, you're asking for it. So yeah. I'm up a little bit, and then as soon as that tree goes out, put some wrapped gifts. My mother, if she didn't have like real ones wrapped yet, or she thought we would like unwrap them because they right. were, she would wrap fake gifts with like beautiful bows. And as soon as the tree went up, she would put big gifts around them. Oh. And they, them. they were just boxes. I love you. And so then, um, and they were like the perfect size boxes as opposed to gifts that might be like awkward. So yeah. she would wrap and she I think she used these same ones for like 10 years so she would just bring those out and then that's just like a barrier to getting to it so it's up right. about a foot which makes a tree like your husband you know when your husband and you're like fighting about like I want the 12 foot and he's like we're not getting a 12 foot tree we're getting, that was us. We're getting an 8 foot tree and you're like oh. and then he wins out and you're like fine but we're gonna put on a riser because now it's gonna be an even taller one and it looks more great you know and it just is that little extra but put the yeah but the, um, it, it can be a little like loose at the bottom. Like you don't have to have ornaments on that bottom row because yeah. the dog will go eat them. That's and what so, we do. We just, just don't decorate the bottom of the tree. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, essentially, you're like building a fence around it without. But if you have like yeah. a like a crawling baby, like don't be afraid to like build. And then as soon as Blakely would go to it, I'd be like, eh, 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 so we have the one finger rule and um, somebody told me this when Brady was itty bitty and we did it with him and it worked and it worked so well that he still knows it. Like you only, you can only touch the tree with one finger. And so you can touch all the ornaments you want to touch and we keep the breakable ones on top, but you can, you can only touch with one finger. And so the, the babies, we still call them the babies. They're almost three, but I'm going to call them that. They're 35. And, and they like, they're like one finger. And at first it's a novelty and they're like one finger, one finger, one finger, but eventually it wears off and they realize, you know, if you want to touch it, yeah. one finger. Yeah. I mean, things that make co the holidays complicated, constantly yes. picking ornaments up off the yeah. floor that are broken. Yep. Um, okay. So we talked about decorating. We talked about shopping, like when you start for that. Do you have, like, in your family, do you have any rules or boundaries for gift giving so that it's not, like, super over the top? Like, I know a lot of families, um, like, my family growing up and Brian's family, they used to do a uh, an ex a gift, what is it called? A gift swap exchange. You draw a name and you get somebody. All the adults did that. And then, like, the kids got presents. You know, everybody bought the kids stuff until they were teenagers, older teenagers. Like, I don't know, maybe 18. Uh, I, didn't even, I think I was younger than that when we stopped doing it. Um, but do you like, do you buy for every adult in your family or do you like, how does that work? Well, it's just now, we're just now getting to that point because we all have little ones that are like three and under, but the oldest. So we're just hitting that because prior we would get something for everyone. Um, my yeah. family's kind of small. Um, and so it worked, it was easy. Yeah. Um, but now we're ha we have the three year olds and the two year olds and the one year olds of the family. So now we're trying to say, let's not do adults. Let's just do the kids because what else do you, and here's the other thing. Like if you, like my brother, um, I don't really want to swap $60 gifts with him and hope I get him something he likes. That's probably going to go in a closet and he's going to do the same for me. Let's both keep our 60 bucks. Like, yeah. I don't need anything else. Like I'm happy with my life unless it was something where like I, someone saw it and they knew I liked it, but I couldn't get to where it yeah. was sold or, or, or like if you're at a book signing and like, you know, that's a neat idea. Cause it's like a personalized gift. But yeah. other than that, you're swapping money that your family should just keep for yourself. And then you buy you something that you like, and you know, you're going to use it mm -hmm. like a necklace or whatever. Like I cannot leave it to my like father-in-law to get me. Like it would be a yeah. lesson. Right. But then we just do the kids. And yeah. so then that's all that really matters on that Christmas morning. Like you're and yeah. opening those gifts. And so I will get something for my mom every year and she and I yeah. all swap little stuff, but I swear we're talking like, uh, maybe one hundred dollar gift is like the nice gift that year, and then yeah. and like a few fifty dollar things, and like that's it, you know. Yeah. yeah. We so my brother and I, when we got a little older, and we were both kind of like, it's just a, the two of us, and yeah. we were like, what do we, you know? My parents, my parents still buy gifts for my brother and I and our spouses and kids, but and we buy for them. But Brett and I were like, what? What do we do? Like, do we exchange gifts? Like, what do you want to do? And we decided that we were gonna do a date night. Um, so Brett and his wife, Taylor, who's a really close friend of mine and Brian and my brother are really close. So the four of us around like that Christmas week, 
Yeah. My mom will watch the kids um, and we will go out on a date and we'll go have like a really nice dinner somewhere and we'll spend that money. We were going to spend on something for each other, but instead it's an experience. And yeah. so like, and we've done that for years. Um, now that we don't live in the same city, we kind of got away from it. But Brett, if you're watching, that's what we need to do this year. I doubt you're yeah, watching. I uh, <laughs> the gifts is great. Um, then you can enjoy it over the holidays. Like you could, like my uncle in Texas, like I don't see him very often, but I want to do something. And so I'll send him, even if it's just like an awesome Harry and David thing. It is so fun to get food in the mail. And, and you're like, oh, what's this? Yes. I can agree. enjoy it. And because they don't need, like, what am I going to get them that like they just wouldn't go get by themselves? And mm -hmm. so. Um, I will send pictures of the kids. I feel like that's kind of like a cop out gift, but I do it because yeah. it, then like they get updated pictures because um, right. they would want them, you know, so I'll send gift uh, pictures and then I'll send food gifts like Nashville. Like if you live in a place that has some neat gift ideas that are local, like yeah. some Nashville stuff or, you know, whatever. That's so fun. I love that idea of sending food. Yeah. Um, what's the other thing I was going to say? Oh, we, so even with the kids, like last year with Brady, we were like, you just have so many, you have so many toys. I mean, obviously he got some toys for Christmas, but we, um, we bought him football tickets. So Brian got him tickets to a bear, the bears bucks game. And they weren't like super fancy, expensive tickets. He just got tickets for them to go on a Sunday and watch. Um, we love the bears. So for them to go play in our city that we live in and it was like an experience and he, the way he packaged it was like really cute. And, um, those kinds of experience things are super fun for kids that are at that age, you know, yeah. Or even like kids could, you could probably explain a coupon situation to a child. Like there's five pieces of paper. Every time that you decide you want one, it means mommy or daddy is going to take you out for ice cream. But you can't yeah. use them all in the same week or the same month. <laughs> they can stay in a, like a fun jar or something. Oh, I love that. That's such a um, But one thing we do is, or at least I do, and my mom, I kind of grew up with my mom, watching my mom do this. Um, so you don't want to wait till the end or even in the beginning and buy a whole lot of toys that your child doesn't necessarily need. But we yeah. were big about having a lot of things to unwrap because that's yeah. what feels exciting. But I swear it's more about the wrapping than it is the gift. Right. So yeah. like, I think it was the other day, like please low on socks. Like I don't know where they go, but we lose them. Oh and gosh, so I needed, I, so I grabbed two pairs. Like that was probably what, not two pairs, but it was like two packs of, you know, whatever for. And yeah. so one went into the drawer and the other one, it'll go stuffed into the bottom of the stocking. So like fill it with stuff you were already going to buy for the child. Like if you're due it around the same summer, thing. <laughs> if the child needs clothes, don't give them to the child on December 23rd and their dresser, you know, wrap them because right. it's just something else for the child to wrap or, or, um, it depends on how much, or if you're like traveling with gifts then like max my space. But if you're not like people will sometimes like my, like if a friend gives us like a stack of books or if I go buy a stack of books, like you wrap them all individually. Now, yes, you're going to go through more wrapping, but that, and it just looks more exciting, but really everything's pretty inexpensive or, yeah. or like two, my, we always have toothpaste and a toothbrush in my stocking. Like really? That's so yes. funny. Oh yes. And because they're probably due for new, all that stuff anyway, or like bubble bath shampoo, that stuff fills yep, up. We got the same things. It's not expensive. Fills Air it time. up. And <laughs> then they're probably due for it, you know? Yeah. And so, some of those like household items that a child's always going to need, like um, this sounds really silly, but I feel like this year I have a lot of like holiday melamine plates and I need to like get them. Like I don't really want to be eating on the Halloween one, but I'll probably just get some cute basics and like that will go under the tree. And then we'll be like, you got your plates. And like a child at three, if, if the parents like, love oh it. my gosh, the child will be like, oh my gosh. And so just the basics, wrap them, include them under the tree because it bulks up everything that you're giving them. So I love that. One other fun thing our family did was, um, so we had, so like, okay, so I'll, I'm going to walk you through our Christmas Eve and Christmas morning. And then I totally want to hear how you guys do yours. Yeah. And, and like, if you guys don't celebrate Christmas, or if you celebrate other holidays, like this will all, these all kind of go together. Yep. Um, but so for Christmas Eve, we always wanted to do, um, something that was easy, but like everybody could kind of get together. Our family is kind of spread out now, but when we were um, growing up, we had a really big family. And so we would all get together and we would have what, what we called a snack dinner that is now known as a charcuterie board. Yes. Uh, my mom the other day was like, did you know this is, this is like, we've been doing this for years. We yes. call it a snack dinner. <laughs> yes, like appetizers for dinner. Yes, appetizers for dinner. And it was like, all the cheese and crackers, all the fruit. Like we always, now we do um, a Chick-fil-A nugget tray and they're open on Christmas Eve and you can order it online and we get Chick-fil-A nuggets and fruit and it's super easy and we'll have the snack dinner. And then um, we like sit around the fire. I love it's all Florida. So there's not even a fireplace, but we sit around and we enjoy that. And then um, before the kids go to bed, we all sit in a circle and we pass around the night before Christmas 
and we each read a page. And it's oh, really fun, especially as kids start to learn to read. Um, but it's mostly fun because my dad changes the words on his page and makes the story really funny. Yes. So, like, that's a that's probably one of my most, like, significant um, memories of Christmas. And then, like, I got my own book when I moved out. And oh, they gave that to I me for that. Christmas. That was really fun. And then on Christmas morning, we, um, you know, we do milk and cookies. I'm pretty sure I, like, put milk and cookies out for Santa until I was, like, you know, in college. Definitely. Uh, and still doing it. Yeah. And then the Christmas morning, we get up super early, and um, Brady's always the first one to wake up. And we open presents, and then we do a uh, scavenger hunt. So this was something my mom and dad started. Uh, I'm sorry, Santa started uh, many years ago. And we would get one clue, like just it was, it was just typed up on a piece of paper. And it was like, this is the place where you bake muffins. And you would go to, and they got harder and harder as we got older. But we would all, my brother and I, Little bitty would do this, but I can still remember being in like college and like being home for Christmas and Brett and I being like, let's do the scavenger hunt. And we would go to the oven and then there would be one in there that says, this is where we wash the clothes. And we would go there and always we would get to the one that said, go to the mailbox and it'd be freezing cold. Oh and I'd be like, I did it last year. You can go to the mailbox. And so we would go and get the scavenger hunt stuff. And then that led us to like our, our like bigger present. That was like yeah. our one, we had like one you know, yeah. Like I remember getting a hair straightener one year and being like, this is awesome. <laughs> um, and so we do that. And then we have like an easy um, Christmas breakfast that my mom always preps the night before or maybe even further in advance. Um, we do now we do like an egg casserole situation. But in the past, we've done all kinds of different things. Um, and then extended family would get together after that. And then for Christmas dinner, we would have like us. We would do like a nice steak dinner. Yeah, at my parents' house. So yeah, so like not super fancy, but like super super meaningful yeah. um, for our family, you know. For sure. Yeah. Um, so tell us about my, you. My Christmas Eve. It depends a little bit. It's kind of changed as we have like in laws, and you know, you get married. They have different yeah, and everything changes. But if we can make it to the church service. We will. Um, Blakely's been you know touch and go at age one and two to decide if we want to sit at a service with her. But um, same. <laughs> same so same. <laughs> that and then um, usually we're watching like. My Christmas, my family Christmas vacation. I never watched oh, it. Oh, we do that too. I forgot that yeah. one. Yeah, like what? I can't remember. The, is that how it's called? My my Christmas, my, Christmas vacation. Yes. Right. That's yeah. Awful. We just I just didn't even know about the movie. Oh, yeah, we watch that every Christmas Eve, and um, Christmas morning we, we usually get to open one present. I feel like that's kind of like a like a common. Yep. One. Usually, you try to like lure the kids to open the one with the pajamas in them, but um. Yeah. Christmas morning, my mom usually gets up early, and my mom's been coming over to my house since we. Um, she moved to Nashville, but um, on a side note, oh, this is like a tricky topic, but when you get married, I feel like sometimes you feel like you're always supposed to go and like, do not be afraid. This is a short and quick tip. Like, do not be afraid to be like, we have kids now. I want to enjoy a Christmas in my house. And so like, we'd love to have you for Christmas Eve. Or Christmas my mom is high-fiving you, by the way. But like, um, we yeah. would love to have those family traditions at our house because yeah. Um, you can strip the fun right out of Christmas when you're on 17 planes and then you're on like 14 car trips and then no longer is that fun. Like, right. so, there you go. Um, so we have it at my house and we don't ever wrap Christmas morning. My mom will usually come over or, or be there and make like sausage biscuits and um, like Sister Schubert's the cinnamon, the like little cinnamon rolls and stuff like that. So she'll spread that out and we'll kind of eat while we open gifts. But yeah. we always um, usually video reactions. At, essentially, we don't wrap Santa gifts. I don't know some people wrap Santa gifts, but that was always fascinating to me. Like some people don't wrap gifts from Santa, and some people do. I do not. I feel like I would mess really? up with you by like same handwriting or like same gift wrap to be like, "Gosh, Santa went to the same place." Like I am afraid I would mess oh, up. Oh, that's so funny. So we what? wrap everything, but we, um, we don't. Yeah, no. Ask no questions. Give no answers. <laughs> Some parents and I still have not had the conversation about Santa. So what are you talking about exactly? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I have no idea. Um, so Santa, Santa likes to leave his gifts just out. Um, and then mommy and daddy will give gifts to Blakely that are wrapped under the tree. Okay. Um, like from mommy and daddy. Things yeah. that, for instance, we were on at the beach this past few weeks ago and we got her like a flamingo and a flamingo book. And so Santa could have been over overseeing that trip and gotten that, but it'd be easier if it just mommy and daddy gave it to her under the tree because then... Yeah. So, um, is Brady in the room? Now I'm like afraid. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm like trying to word it. I'm like, I'm not like messing with 
this up. I actually thought that a few minutes ago. I was like, I wonder if there are any children watching this. <laughs> I, oh, tell your kids to outlive the room. So, uh, <laughs> three years. <laughs> so Santa, so those gifts are out and they're usually all clumped together. And so like I would have one sofa of gifts, my brother would have one, and then we'd come around yeah. the corner and it's like dun da 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 and like last year of course we were waiting for this big reaction and Blakely was like it just te- just like tears. Like she didn't understand why we were all like video camera in her face. So we might Oh talk. my goodness. Um, but we usually try to make those gifts look really big, like, like look fancier they are. For instance, last year I had a few little things for her, but I didn't feel like it looked all that amazing. And so um, hopefully she's not overwhelmed this year. But I think it was like so much and everybody's and she's like an only child. So everybody's like in her face with the cameras. You know? right. <laughs> anyway, so I went on Amazon and they have I should like find a link. It's like this pop up princess tent that like glow in the dark stars. And it like popped up into it. it's pretty big and it's round. And this thing was like twenty four ninety nine, and it was one of those last minute like Amazon Prime gifts. When you pop up that huge tent in the living room, it like looks like Santa's Wonderland. I'm gonna need you know? the link to this princess. Yes, because I'm a little girl. Like, probable, yes, I'll give it to you. Any like big old tent or teepee, if you can find like a cheap one, that kind of thing. Like even if it lasts a year, this thing's still going strong though. But I mean, that looks like when you walk around the corner sometimes. Yes, there are like the nicer gifts, but sometimes they're in like a small gift and or a small thing. And so I, we kind of want that big reaction. The last year she was overwhelmed, but sure. I think you want, I want it to be like really exciting. And so usually yeah. we do like one bigger physical, bigger gift, just so it like, whoa, you know, yeah. and then you would like hide little stuff in the tent and then they can go in and discover it all. But um, that's awesome. Eventually just hang out that day. We might have like the in-laws over that night. Like we're still figuring out all those things, but I'm yeah. serious y'all. If you want to have Christmas at your house, you just tell your family, like, we're going to do it at my house this year. Right. Yeah. My family, think, I mean, God bless them. They all come down from Pensacola. Yeah. And I'm here. And it's so good. Yep. Goodness. Okay. Well, that is awesome. And if I don't get to these um, recipe questions, my mom is going to start texting me and be like, Emily, I have questions for you to ask. Her. Let's do it. Let's do it. I have to say, too, by the way, so you and your mom are super close and are very similar in that she has a background in what you you do now, right? Yeah. yeah, I grew up watching her style tables. Like I would come home from school and she would have a table style in the, thing, in the, in the dining room and I just kind of ignored it. Like it was like literally July 4th at the wrong holiday. Like I would just walk in and it was, that was her hobby. And she had, before yeah. Pinterest, she had like a big three ring binder and the outside said, her name's Franzi and the outside said Franzi's tables. And she would like keep, she hired a photographer to shoot photos of these tables. So we still have most of them. Oh, wow. Put them, on, put them on greeting cards and sold those for a while. But she had a book called Franzi's Tables. And so that's why my book, she wrote it with me because it was like, I knew she'd always wanted to have a book on tables. And so she already helped me do everything. So she would go on road trips and she would sit and flip through her Franzi's Tables book. And she pitched so many publishers. But this was in like 19 like nineties when if yeah. you did, if you were an unknown, you were not going to get a book. I mean, it was right. very, very, very difficult. Um, yeah, totally. And so anyway, now I'm excited to kind of let her do that dream, you know, alongside me. So it works. And I was oh, like, so cool. that's amazing. I didn't really, like pay attention to all her tablescapes, but first when I kind of got, when I got a dining room of my own, when I was in graduate school and had like a townhouse, with, like a real dining room, and then yeah. she flew into town to help me, um, throw a big Halloween party. And then I think I was hooked. I was like, this is so fun. But in high school, I just kind of ignored it. But that's so funny. I'm priming Blakely. Like she's into it. Right. Like, she gets it. like she'll literally be like, that's beautiful. beautiful. Like she's oh, getting my, yeah. my mom was, um, a teacher for 38 years and oh, elementary, school. elementary school. Oh no. No, I oh, haven't. No, I haven't. Do you guys have maybe go away? Mine went away. Okay. I think it's just mine. Hey guys. This is fly. Hey guys. This is fly. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna reset the I think she's resetting her mic because you're hearing an echo, which was driving us crazy. We fixed it. Just ignore. You can power through. Just pretend it's not there. I'm power through, guys. Power through, guys. I'm gonna do you guys okay. do you guys do it? You don't hear it on my ears. You are. You are. Courtney, do you hear me? Echo? I hear it, but it, I hear it, but it. It's not that. I mean, you could maybe. It'll, I don't think it's that bad. Do y'all hear it? Do people? Like I can switch microphones switch on mine. That might be it. Let me help yeah. out, and I'll be right. I'll Courtney, it's all you for like one minute. Like one minute. All me. What Let's we'll talk about for a minute. Um. Oh, y'all heard the echo too. Oh, yeah. Still echoing. Still echoing. This seems worse. I go back to the room. You guys, this is good. Okay, they're saying they're saying, they're saying they're down, they're down. Oh, you got it. Yeah. Yeah. 
why does this happen? The other one I think is better. <laughs> we could we could end this one. It would start a new one. Our followers are just dealing with all dealing with all that issues. That issues. Okay. Okay. Turn your volume down on your computer. I do think I did that when I was having echo earlier. No. Yeah. Switch back to whatever other mic you just did a minute ago and then turn your volume. Okay, I can't hear Courtney if I hear this. Do you still hear the echo? Where else did you delay? Do you hear the echo? Do you hear the echo? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end this one. We'll start a new one. All right, soon, all right, soon. Okay, guys.